How are you doing, Nico? I'm good, busy, but yeah, ready to go. All right, let's go. I'll put the timer on. All right. Um, I just need screen sharing enabled. Um, yes. Yeah. Here, it's ready. Does it work? And is that good? Yes. Right, just whenever I'm ready then? Yeah. Cool. Um, I'll just, you might want to mute your mics just in case. Cool. Okay. Uh, kia ora koutou katoa and hello everyone. My name is Nico and it's my absolute pleasure to be speaking to you from down here in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Um, I'd like to begin by reciting a brief karakia or traditional um, Maori opening passage. Te kua te wairua ki a rere ki ngā taumata, hai arahi a tātou mahi. Me tā tātou whai i ngā tikanga a rātou mā, ki a mau ki a ita, ki a kore ai i ngaro, ki a pupuri, ki a whakamala, ki a tīna, tīna, huie, taikie. Psychedelics used responsibly and with proper caution would be for psychiatry what the microscope is for biology and medicine or the telescope is for astronomy. As a medical student with a keen interest in the clinical applicability of psychedelics, I often recall this quote from esteemed psychedelic researcher and psychiatrist, Dr. Stan Groff. The first time coming across it, I found such a claim, particularly one expressed with such conviction, to be full of intrigue and, as I would later come to learn, truth. So my interest in such research was peaked just over a year ago now, after I was fortunate enough to be granted a summer research scholarship, for which I reviewed the use of psychedelics, um, namely LSD and psilocybin, in assisting the treatment of alcohol use disorder, which is a <clears throat> debilitating and prevalent condition that often goes untreated despite significant impact on well-being. Uh, certainly, psychedelic research has by no means been limited to these two compounds, nor to the treatment of this disorder alone, but this proved to be a topic with a significant body of evidence, like in a more revised summary, uh, in addition to appealing to some degree of personal significance. So given my audience, um, I don't think I need to spend too much time on what psychedelics are exactly, but just as a quick overview, Typically, the classic psychedelics that many are familiar with refer to serotonin or 5-hydroxytryptamine receptor agonists, such as LSD, psilocybin, mescaline, and DMT. Um, however, other psychoactive drugs such as ketamine and MDMA can also sometimes be discussed in the context of psychedelics, among several others. Uh, for the purposes of our review, however, the primary focus was upon LSD and psilocybin, which are two of the more renowned classic psychedelics, um, simply due to there being more research and a higher likelihood of future therapeutic potential uh, and application. So just to provide a brief history, the use of naturally occurring psychedelics can be traced back beyond millennia and throughout such, such time has been consistently recognized and practiced as a powerful spiritual sacrament 
by many different indigenous communities. Um, early psychedelic research, however, was first conducted during the 1950s, following the discovery of LSD by Swiss chemist and psychedelic luminary, uh, Albert Hoffman. Now, oh, there he is right there. During this time, in addition to notable impact on the cultural landscape, um, as those who lived through the 60s would be able to tell you, thousands of research papers were published which discussed the various psychological, physiological, and mystical effects of psychedelic substances, with preliminary evidence suggesting potential clinical efficacy in treating um, depression, end-of-life anxiety, and various substance use disorders, including the harmful use of alcohol. Typically psychedelics, or more specifically LSD in the majority of cases, were administered alongside one of two therapeutic frameworks. Uh, psycholytic therapy, which used repeated low doses of psychedelics to enhance uh, patient response to more um, traditional psychoanalytic models, or psychedelic therapy, which relied upon using high doses to manifest a peak mystical or transcendental experience that aimed to inspire profound personal insight and revelation. Unfortunately, as many of you will be aware, despite this positive preliminary evidence, uh, strict legal prohibitions were soon enforced upon psychedelic drugs um, in partial response to the growing counterculture movement of the time, coupled with misrepresentative media coverage and socio-political exaggeration of adverse effects. Um, however, after several decades of prohibition, the beginning of a new millennium brought, brought with it a renewed interest in revisiting the medicinal and therapeutic potential of these powerful but um, otherwise superficially understood chemicals. And as a result, appropriately monitored use of psychedelics is beginning to be increasingly recognized as more than just a recreational experience, but as a powerful and highly effective psychotherapeutic tool, which is consistently proven to be safe under controlled conditions, uh, in addition to exhibiting low addictive potential. So just touching on that, I like to refer to this widely reported Lancet study, which some of you might be familiar with, conducted by Professor David Nutt et al. Um, here we see drugs ordered by their overall harm scores. And it's worth noting that LSD and psilocybin or mushrooms are located here towards the lower end of the spectrum. Not sure if you can see my cursor, um, but that's in stark contrast to alcohol, which is considered the most harmful drug when factoring in both harm to users and others. Um, so on that, Cheerful note, the Treatment of Alcohol Use Disorder, or AUD, has been the focus of psychedelic research since the 1950s and actually comprises a majority of early LSD research. Uh, currently, there are three FDA-approved medications for AUD, which can be used alongside behavioral therapy and or mutual help groups, such as Alcoholics Anonymous. However, most of those who seek treatment for AUD rely solely on therapeutic options rather than medication, while the majority simply don't seek treatment whatsoever. Um, as a result of this, in addition to the well-established adverse health effects, which can be seen there, um, harmful use of alcohol continues to also have significantly detrimental societal, interpersonal, and even economic impact worldwide. So research investigating psychedelic assisted treatment of AUD was pioneered by doctors Humphrey Osmond and Abram Hoffer, the former having coined the term psychedelics, which means mind manifesting. They claimed to successfully treat hundreds of cases of AUD with LSD at rates substantially higher than more conventional methods of treatment at the time. Uh, in fact, one particularly noteworthy correspondent in their trials was the co-founder of Alcoholics Anonymous, Bill Wilson, who, inspired by psychedelic experiences of his own, advocated for the integration of LSD and the associated spiritual contemplation, which is a trait often said to be enhanced by psychedelics, 
into the more clinical approach to treating AUD. Um, unfortunately, this research was widely disregarded and there has since been a demand for more scientifically rigorous studies with better, to, better defined variables and reproducible methodologies, um, which is a notoriously challenging task in psychedelic research, um, given the difficulty in blinding against such uniquely potent drug effects. So it was also acknowledged by many to be equally important that the personal perspective of each psychedelic experience significantly influence the patient outcome. And that future studies should also focus on providing and maintaining a more comfortable and naturalistic experimental setting, uh, which is defined by both the surrounding physical environment and the nature of interactions uh, with those conducting and monitoring study. So the popularization of the term set and setting effectively captures the importance of this um, with set referring to the personality, preparation, expectation and intention of the person having the experience and setting to the physical, social and cultural environment in which it takes place. So this is a bit of a busy slide and I apologize for that, but shown here are two of the uh, key studies that we included in our review which is a 2012 meta-analysis of six randomized controlled trials investigating LSD-assisted treatment of alcoholism, and a 2015 pilot study of psilocybin as a treatment for alcohol dependence. Uh, without diving too deep into the statistics so as to not keep you here all day, um, both studies concluded their respective interventions demonstrated significant therapeutic value with um, LSD comprising the majority of earlier research and psilocybin emerging as a modern day counterpart. The 2015 pilot study conducted through NYU has since been extended to include more participants and has reported that despite extreme variability in individual participant experiences, there are overarching themes, um, quote, rich in self-compassion, love, connection, catharsis and psychodynamic material. And it's the variability of each experience which is uniquely suited to facilitate personal growth. They also noted that there were strong correlations between the observed clinical outcomes and the perceived intensity of the experience, which may support long-standing claims that the compelling mystical element of a high dose psychedelic experience is a key influence factor in influencing the therapeutic outcome. So one of the big questions currently surrounding the therapeutic use of psychedelics is how exactly do they help? The answer of which is kind of fundamental to the optimization and understanding of treatment. So as highlighted in one of the chapters I reviewed, rather than having a direct effect on any addiction related pathway, psilocybin and LSD act on higher neural pathways, indicating multiple mechanisms could impact the drive for change, um, acting holistically on the brain. In particular, three well-established and potentially modifiable mechanisms of change are shown here, uh, a reduced craving, enhanced self-efficacy, which is the conviction that one can successfully execute the behavior required to produce outcomes, and increased motivation to pursue positive change. Um, of note, LSD and psilocybin are not the only psychedelic interventions to be investigated um, with regards to treating AUD, as preliminary studies have also evaluated the benefits of ayahuasca, peyote, and ibogaine for substance abuse rehabilitation. Um, in addition to being further supported from findings from recent clinical trials, um, which investigated MDMA and ketamine. So in addition to discussing the controversial socio-political history of psychedelics, uh, we also addressed the prospective future of research, given the recent resurgence of interest in the field. Having acknowledged previous scientific shortcomings through improved modern study designs, it's been suggested that further progress now requires more publicized acknowledgement and amendment of the swayed societal perspective towards psychedelics and addiction, with psychedelic assisted treatment of AUD being 
uh, aptly described as a stigmatized treatment for a stigmatized disorder. Um, the substantial drop off in trials within the past half century, which you can see here, um, despite that positive preliminary evidence, is really testament alone to the adverse effect that excessively stringent regulation and stigmatization of psychedelic drugs has had on conducting valid clinical research. Um, though I feel I'm probably preaching to the converted there. Uh, none of this is to say that psychedelic use or the psychedelic experience is completely without risk, um, especially when approached irresponsibly and without proper supervision. But as a means of controlled therapy, psychedelics have consistently demonstrated uh, considerably positive applicability, provided the nature of and intention behind the experience is appropriately understood and respected, and the critical importance of establishing that supportive set and setting is recognized. So regarding the treatment of AUD specifically, it's pretty apparent that the absolute anti-addictive efficacy um, should not no longer be what's primarily under investigation, um, given the evidence to date. Instead, the degree to which they are effective should be established, um, particularly in comparison to or in conjunction with um, currently approved means of treatment, as well as the standard of psychotherapeutic intervention that should be administered alongside them in order to reap the greatest possible benefit. AUD is a needlessly destructive condition with effects that extend far beyond the physiological um, and it frequently causes lasting personal damage to the lives of those it impacts um, directly or otherwise. It's clear that conventional treatments for AUD are often ineffective and perhaps the solution to addressing the currently uninspiring rates of recovery lies within a deeper, more introspective approach as is certainly the case with um, psychedelic assisted therapy. Now, stepping away from the science of it all in my final few minutes, I would be remiss really to not address the um, personal significance of this project that I alluded to earlier. Um, throughout my youth, I struggled with depression and anxiety, which manifested in self-harm and later on substance abuse. Tenacious in my efforts to uh, avoid this reality, um, alcohol quickly became my favored drug of choice and remained a pretty prominent and persistent vice in my life for what were several tempestuous years, to say the least. Uh, my inability to recognize such indulgence as problematic was made no less difficult by the fact that as a young Otago freshman, I was living in a city not exactly renowned uh, here in New Zealand for their subdued student drinking culture. Um, during my second year of uni, however, and 19th year of life, I took approximately 100 micrograms of LSD for the first time and effectively enhanced my existence for the better. Um, in saying that, my problems were by no means solved overnight, but I had been granted the gift of a fresh and overwhelmingly beautiful perspective which instilled within me this profound drive to live a more fulfilling and well-examined life. Uh, I've taken psychedelics a handful of times since then, um, making sure to take time between sessions to examine and integrate whatever lessons had arisen um, within my momentarily expanded consciousness. Uh, each experience varied in dose, set and setting, but really never failed to demonstrate value uh, when approached with the appropriate respect and intention. Accordingly, my first psychedelic experience and the several that have followed remain to this day some of my most treasured and positively influential experiences. And here are just some photos of me and two of the several landscapes I've been lucky enough to explore here in New Zealand. Uh, personally, I've been sober from alcohol for over 15 months now. Um, I've been fortunate enough to get paid simply to learn more about psychedelics 
and to build upon this learning by organizing a symposium through my university to promote the role of psychedelics in medicine. Most importantly to me, however, I have experienced the hopelessness that comes with feeling like your mind is against you. But I have also experienced firsthand the incredible shift in that type of thinking that can be inspired through the safe use of psychedelics, uh, particularly when more conventional means have proven ineffective. When asked why they decide to enter the field, um, medical students like myself will often cite a desire to help people and to reduce unnecessary suffering. The evidence at hand for psychedelic assisted therapy is continu continuing to support what many have already intuitively known for decades now. There is immense clinical value to these substances worth further investigation and understanding. And to deny that fact, especially given the state of mental health, not only here in New Zealand, but on a global scale, is to allow such unnecessary suffering to endure. Thankfully, to quote a familiar icon of the 60s counterculture, the times they are a changing. There is no doubt that sober scrutinization will be required as the research progresses and the use of psychedelics becomes more accepted as a means of therapy. But I am confident the evidence will eventually speak for itself. And if not, clearly I and many others are willing to speak on its behalf. Personally, I am proud to be part of a community that shares my passion for such change and thank you all sincerely for your time. Nga manaki tanga and kia ora.